The wait is now over. As you can see here on my desktop here in Windows 8.1, I have an icon that says 11 Rack Editor. That's right, the 11 Rack Editor is now standalone. I also have a little icon here on my start page here in Windows 8.1. So let's go ahead and launch this editor and see what it looks like. Bam, and there it is. You'll see how it's coming up here. You don't have to have Pro Tools open. You don't have to have any DAW at all open. Right there it is. The 11 Rack Editor, completely in standalone. The wait is over now. 11 Rack Editor is here. Okay, so that was dumb, but the 11 Rack Standalone Editor is awesome. So if you've been a Pro Tools user, you'll already know that in Pro Tools 10, in Pro Tools 9, and in Pro Tools 8 LE, that an 11 rack editor was included in the install. In Pro Tools 11, that changed. It was removed from integration within Pro Tools 11, but now we have the 11 rack editor completely in standalone. So that means I don't need Pro Tools 11 open. I don't need any Pro Tools open if I don't want, or I can use it in Pro Tools 11. I can use it maybe with say, Ignite. I can use it with say, Reason, or maybe if you have Reaper, Logic, whatever DAW you have, you can use the standalone 11 rack editor with it. And you'll notice that it's extremely similar to the previous integrated 11 rack editor. Okay, so here we are now in Pro Tools 11. Let me just pop open my standalone 11 rack editor. I already have it open here, as you can see down here. Just pop that up right there. Here we are in Pro Tools 11, and this editor acts just the way it did before. So. I can click on the name of the rig. I'll just go to user and I can change rigs. So here's the 11 rack unit on the screen. And as soon as I choose a new rig, there we go. We can see it's already changed on the 11 rack unit. That's reflected on our editor and it's reflected up here in our little cluster or the mini 11 rack editor that's been in Pro Tools 11 since the uh, beginning. And by the way, if you don't have this little mini window or cluster, you can open that over here. Just press this little down arrow and right here you'll see 11 rack. If I uncheck that, you'll see now it's gone. Then I'll just come back, click, and check that. And there we go. And by the way, you can actually move this around if you want. And I've covered that before in, in a different video. So we'll change another rig here. Let's just grab something here. All right. Now I can turn on or off effects just as before. And you'll see this on the rack as well. So turn off our FX2. Turn on the FX2. I can, of course, click on the effect and make changes just as I could before in the other editor. I can also make changes on the rack still, and that will be reflected in our standalone editor. So let me make a couple changes from the rack of this flanger here. So I'll just hold the FX2 button there. And here's our flanger. So I'll just change the, say, pre-delay a little bit. And as you can see, the response is pretty much instantaneous. So all of that works just as it did before in the previous editor. So of course, with this little cluster, we were able to load rigs, but we weren't able to save rigs. But of course, now with the standalone editor, we can save rigs. So I can save to computer, save all rigs to computer, just as before, of course, save to 11 rack, obviously. So let's try uh, doing a load all rigs from computer. We'll just see how quick this works with the standalone editor. And I'll just grab something from my self-made pack here. Uh, let's just say this orange is pack two, load all rigs from computer. Awesome. So now it's dumping the patches from my computer, my hard drive onto the 11 rack, right from the standalone editor. And again, I don't have to have Pro Tools open for this. I can do this in complete standalone. So now we'll check and see, there we go. So I'll choose this AC601 and see how quickly it changes on the unit itself. And it's just that fast, awesome. Again, we can make changes to our parameters. Right from the editor, just as we could before. So a couple things that change would be saving individual presets, like individual effect presets. So let's say I want to save a multi-chorus in the Pro Tools 10 and down integrated editor, you could save to your session file. Well, now these are saved to a different directory, a root settings folder and these will be created automatically for you at least they should so i'll just choose save setting as and that brings up the default location which should be on uh, windows at least your documents 11 rack editor plugin settings and then 11 
modulation. Now, 11 modulation is, of course, because the multi-chorus is modulation. If I was saving a distortion, then it would be a distortion folder and so on. It's pretty easy to understand. It kind of keeps everything in a group instead of individual folders for everything. So I can call this, say, demo chorus one and save that. And then I can access that right from my little drop down. And again, you can save as many of these as you want. And in a previous 11 rack rig pack release that I did, the Fury rig pack, if you have that, you know, I included some uh, chorus presets, some flanger presets. We can import those uh, real easily. So I'll do that now. I'll just click this little down arrow next to effect presets. I'll choose import settings. And you'll see first it opens the 11 modulation folder because again, flanger, that's modulation, but these are located elsewhere. So I'll navigate to that directory. So in here in the 104 Fury rigs, effect presets, and we're doing flanger. So here are some presets I'd like to import. So I'll just grab them, hit open. There we go. Now I have access to all four of those whenever I want them. Even if I say change to a completely different rig, still have access to them. So if I want to save an effect parameter of say just the amp cab there, I can save setting as that takes me to 11 amp cabs. And this is a modern OD. Save that. And there you go. You can recall that whenever you want. Just that easy. And again, if I'm saving a distortion, then it gives me 11 distortion. So that is where your plugin settings from the standalone 11 rack editor will be saved now. Before they were saved by default in the DigiDesign plugin settings folder. Now, if you have a bunch of settings like this that are, you already have saved in your plugin settings folder, you uh, can just drag those over. So I go to my documents and an 11 rack editor plugin settings and flanger is modulation. So I'll just grab that. And I'll just hit control A to select all of these. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and drag these over. So I want to copy those. I already have these four in there so I can skip those. Okay, there we go. So we'll bring up our standalone editor again here. And now it's just that easy. And that holds true for our other effects too. If you already have a lot of effect settings saved, you can just drag those over or you can go through and import the settings as I've already shown. Either way, we'll give you the same result. So we've already looked at loading all rigs from computer. You can, of course, load from computer if you want just one rig. We already know how to do that. We can, of course, still choose our factory settings. All of this is just the same with very few changes. If I say adjust the volume, you'll notice that it, of course, will change on our standalone editor on the 11 rack and up here in our little cluster. So I'll change the volume. See that there. Okay. Of course, you can do your rig input from the standalone editor, uh, our user options. Of course, we don't have the embed rig settings from now. It's in your setup and I.O. And of course, you can go to tuner just like we used to in the previous 11 rack editor. So I can go to save. And let's just say save to computer. And that by default will open my plugin settings folder within the 11 rack editor, which is in the documents folder. And I, do, I don't have to save my rig settings to this folder, I can save those anywhere I want. But your other effect settings, they will need to be saved within this directory. So I like to save my rig settings to a different drive. So I'll just save that one here. There we go, now it's saved. And I can always load that up if I want using load from computer. And of course we still have save all rigs to computer. And that works exactly the same as it did before. And the standalone 11 rec editor is absolutely free, by the way. And I'll be sure to include links in the description where you can download that. And we can look here in the file bar. You can click about and you can see your version number of the 11 rack editor. And you can go to say window and minimize if you don't want the full editor open. Of course, mute our mains, mute our phones. Again, all this is the same as our previous editor. So actually, let me open up Pro Tools 10. We'll see these side by side real quick and then we'll end the video. So here we are. We have Pro Tools 10 open now. And now you can see the integrated editor right next to the standalone editor. And something that's kind of really cool is you can make changes in the standalone editor or in the integrated editor or from the 11 rack or from the mini window cluster up there on the top. And you'll see the changes reflected on each of these windows and on the rack itself. So that's pretty cool. So let's adjust the volume here. Awesome. Let's adjust the presence. Cool, so there we go.
The 11 Rack Editor is indeed standalone. Pop it open whenever you want. Create your rigs, save your rigs, change parameters, do whatever you want with the standalone 11 Rack Editor. Again, completely free. And of course, you can learn more about the Avid 11 Rack from avid.com.